Hey, 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 it's B-Rad Celebrity Hairstylist here, your host of the Hairstylist Empowerment Podcast. Today, we have a special feature called SalonTraining.com Trainer Spotlight, featuring today's guest, Heather Kulis. How do you spell your last name, Heather? C-O-U-L-E-S, Kulis. Okay, cool. I thought so. I just yeah. didn't want to mess it up and you, end up doing it anyway. Few, you're one of the few people that got it right. A lot want to okay. go cool. Okay, yeah, yeah cool. So uh, Simple Salon Solutions. She's got the whole purpose-driven warrior pr princess, save the world type of vibe. And I know that personally because from dogging her, she is so cool. So now that we're going to dive right in and just um, give us a little bit about yourself and kind of introduce yourself. Well, I uh, like many in my industry, I started uh, doing this uh, hairdressing gig when I was like 15 years old. And then I went through, you know, being a stylist, being an owner, and um, I think, and then an educator for perms, I know that dates me. And then uh, from there, I think as a, as a stylist, you kind of end up choosing a road. And I always was really busy, but I don't think it was because I was a great hairdresser. And so <laughs> I, uh, I actually got headhunted by uh, Doris Tan and she's, she's an amazing, uh, just an amazing mentor to me. And then I was a sales consultant for a lot of years. And uh, I'll tell you, a lot of the people on salontraining.com, I have actually been through a lot of their programs, like just over oh. the span. And then during the shutdown, when we first had the first shutdown that we had, I kind of ended up in this gig very organically. I just was trying to keep in touch with people and contacting people. And next thing you know, um, here I am. And so now I coach, uh, I help salon owners and suite owners uh, uh, organically uh, find uh, their ideal clients, their ideal staff, and create raving fans. <laughs> I'm absolutely fascinated by why people buy. And I figure if you can get in front of human behavior, you win. Amazing. That? Amazing. That's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, going back to perming, the funny thing is, when I was a platform artist, I worked for a perming company. I worked for Oligo. I was their platform artist. So I did all their, their education for Canada. That's so wild. It's funny. We already have stuff in common. There so one main thing is why aren't salons <clears throat> making profits? Well, first of all, I think making profit, I, I don't think that they really understand uh, how, how, how they bleed, first of all, because the, the margin for making a salon profitable is so small it's like mm. you know one to three percent in service and yet they 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 dive after the service dollar and um the cost to do business in our industry is just astronomical between you know all the different uh you know expenses that you have I think and and what's really neat for me is um i ran my salon i made every mistake ever possible made and i was just like them i would sit at the end of the month and I'd be paying my bills. In fact, I just remember the day even I'm sitting there and I'm paying my bills and I know I'll have enough to pay everybody but me. And yet, no matter how much revenue I put through, I had everything from one salon working alone myself to six stylists. It doesn't make any difference. Like if anything, I was probably more profitable when I was working on my own. And um, I think a lot of it is um, definitely around the pricing and there's, mm. it's, it's really in your head. And I understand that so much too. I mean, you go up and you're going to charge $200 next thing, you know, 120 just falls out of your mouth. And I, I just, they're very kind people here. I mean, I, as a people, they mm. just want to help the absolute world, but profitability is really a tough one. Getting revenue. Well, they're both tough right now, but I, fo I do focus a lot on the retail dollar just because the profitability in that arena is so high. Mm -hmm. Like it is so high. So if you don't have a high retail right now, you, you're just, you can't, you can't do it. So yeah. with going back to charging less or not charging enough, do you think some people may have like, they don't feel worthy to charge that 200 or they feel sorry for the client and say, well, they don't have very much money. So I'm only going to charge 120, even though I know my costs are, or done the education, that sort of thing as well. Because I think for a lot of hairstylists, they either have an imposter syndrome because they don't think they're good enough. I'm not good enough to charge. Like, why would somebody charge $10 for a haircut versus somebody that charges $1,500 for a haircut? They both went to school. They both got the same training. 
So what would be what would be the difference? Which I well, I mean, the whole thing is one in your head, whether, whether no matter what you do. And it's something I struggle with today. Like I already have a program It's a valuable program. I know how much it is and I know what, what I charge. I've already written it down so I can remind myself and out my mouth still falls mm -hmm. a different price. So, you know, I think a lot of that imposter syndrome that we have, I, I believe in that wholeheartedly that we, we are always thinking about our, what we're worth and is it really worth that? You know, it's only half an hour of my time. I could do this and, mm -hmm. you know, and we start to really devalue what it is that that we do and one of the things that i really focus on with salons is it's never the price it is always making that price match the value mm -hmm. and if you don't feel like what you're doing is valuable enough you are never going to be able to to feel good about charging what you're really worth i, I always use this example of when you go into the westin and you see the guy you got the doorman there you got the coffee you got the girl behind the desk and she, she knows your name and I already know, I, I know clients know the minute they walk in, first of all, if they're ever coming back. Mm -hmm. And um, I already know I'm, I'm going to be spending, you know, a couple hundred bucks for my hotel room. And then you think about, um, and I got no problem with that. I mean, come mm -hmm. on, fold the toilet paper. The guy at the door, he's got a hat on. It's great, yeah. right? I, mm -hmm. I'm good. But when I walk into the Sleepy's Motel and things aren't like that, and they charge me $200, I have been totally burned. Now, yes. this is the same $200. I had it in my pocket when I walked into both of those places, but, and they got no, you know, so it's always sort of making the value. And, and I, what I found in working with salons is as we begin to increase their, I call it the extreme customer journey. Mm -hmm. don't, don't give them what they expect because they expect that. But when you give them more than they expect mm -hmm. and you're doing this for them, all of a sudden, these stylists that were having a difficult time charging what they were worth, they feel like they're worth it. The skill never changed, you know, but all of a sudden they've got, you know, the coffees and the chocolates and the, mm -hmm. the, the greetings and everyone, you know, and then all of a sudden that feeling of their own worth or the, the service that they're offering changes, but it's totally in your mind. Exactly, because you're creating that experience. And that's the whole point. People mm -hmm. are coming for the experience. So I can do a haircut, you can do a haircut. What's the difference? Shorter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, if somebody's coming in, it's that experience they get with me, or the experience they get with Heather, when they sit in her chair, um, if they sit in my chair, yes, we both went to school. Yes, we both have the training. Yes, we both. But it's how do they feel? Do they feel better coming out? than they did coming in or do they feel like oh well he did he you know put me in the assistant did most of the work he was working on two other clients at the same time you know because and then maybe the stylist might well if i do one i'll make some money but if i can do three that's even better and then pay an assistant a little bit you know but clients really want that one-on-one -on -one time they're the priority in your chair they should they're paying for your time they're paying for your skill they're paying for your talent they're not paying for gossip they're not paying for how you were out drinking last night and you came in drunk and you shouldn't be working today you should have stayed at home in bed they don't want to know your home life drama they don't want to know the salon drama they want that experience because the only one you're competing with is yourself so learn how to take that next level up what can make you better not what they're doing down the street and this is one big question that i find in a lot of hair groups which heather you probably find too everybody says what do you charge for a balayage what do you charge and these are stylists asking stylists they're not clients asking what you charge it's other so how do you feel about that when other stylists are saying, what do you charge who live in a totally different area, have totally different clients, totally different experience? You know, money is always a fallback position. Whenever the conversation get, gets back to money, we get back again to value and money, you know, because you do not want somebody who's coming to you because you got the best price, honestly. And that's the problem with Instagram. You'll go out there and you'll market, you spend money on ads and you do all of this kind of stuff to say, hey, come in here and check me out and usually you've got some kind of draw or promotion or whatnot and so you got them in to, to your chair from instagram oh instagram works really super good but mm -hmm. it's working really super good for the other hairdresser down the street yes. doing balayage so if you've got somebody who's chasing down prices 
they're really not your ideal client. So we get back to our ideal client and it gets right back to that, to that, their, um, that experience. You hit on such a huge thing right now when you're talking, my biggest pet peeve really is you've got a client in your chair. She's paying you for your time you ha- and, and you have her trapped. Mm-hmm. You have her trapped and you, you know, talking about Aunt Alma's thyroid problem or even her Aunt Alma's thyroid yes. problem. I don't care if you're not talking about her. It's her mm-hmm. favorite subject. And and it's a real habit. We all have it. I'm yeah. so guilty when somebody says, oh, you know what's happening? And then you jump right in. Oh, well, you know what happened to me? She doesn't care. You know, no. you need to you need to be uber focused on that client right now, like more, more than ever, because clients are migrating at a speed we've never seen. Yeah. And that's the thing when they're in the chair, they're the main focus. I believe as a stylist, one soft skill that a lot of people lack in is listening. They, they, their mind wanders. They're like, okay, but I got to get this. I got to pick up groceries. I got to, while the the client's talking and, you know, they could have said my house burnt down. I lost my dog. And you're like, wow, that's fantastic. And and that's, (laughs) that's where the gold lies. Because Mm -hmm. even as when I was an owner, like a million years ago, because you know, it's been a while, Mm -hmm. but um, even when I was an owner, I would sit there and I'd be doing a client and I would listen to a staff member, you you know, they'd be washing somebody's hair and they'll be like, oh, my scalp's been so itchy. And they're like, oh, I know Alberta winter is so dry. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, there's an opportunity right there for retail. She has a problem and, Mm -hmm. and, and you could have solved that in like 30 seconds, drove me crazy. So even when I go into salons and I see all of this opportunity, which is drives mm-hmm. me crazy because it's absolutely everywhere i'm one of the things i say all the time you want more money go get it like, exactly exactly pay attention yeah. to what's going on around you and you you can win this so easy of course and then don't complain after and say oh that client never buys anything right well if you never suggest it um you know what i mean you're not gonna as i say if you need your car fixed you're not gonna go to you know a dentist to have it done. Obviously, if we're the expert in the field, we need to use all the tools, you know, in our arsenal toolbox. And we we have, they come to us because we're the professional. They want us to tell them what do they need? How do they get their hair back in a healthier condition? How can, you know I mean? You can suggest it. If they say, no, that's fine. At least you're planting the seed. And I'm a, I'm a consumer trend nerd. Okay. All I do is I, I sit on McKinley reports, what Forbes is saying. I listen to Brian, you know, Cuban. I mean, that's kind of my jam. Like I mm-hmm. really, really love what, what is moving people right now. Cause yes. it's really, really changing. And if 49% of, of consumers that come to like salons purchase professional products, mm-hmm. and I don't know a single salon who has, 49% purchase rate. No, that's, They're, that's so high. Most of them are lucky if they even do 10%. Oh my gosh. They yeah. let it sit on and they're like, and the client says, Oh, what's, Oh, look, there, we have a, a selection over there. So either one, leave them to the receptionist to sell them something or, you know what I mean? You know, or or I, those client doesn't know. It's, it's like us going into a drugstore, looking yeah. on the shelves and yeah. which one is the best one for me, you know? Yeah. And it's bizarre. Um, Kevin Murphy did this uh, uh, man on the street study where they just mm-hmm. stopped people randomly. And they said, if you could change one thing about your, your stylist or your, what would that be? And overwhelmingly, as I wish she would tell me what she was using or what she would overwhelmingly. Yeah. And this is not like Heather just saying, hey, you know what, guys, yeah. you should do this. This is like a, a, an actual study out there. And then I had a girlfriend sitting at my table not, you know, a bit ago. And she's like, look at, this is what I wanted. Every time I go there, they give me mm-hmm. something different. And first of all, I got a whole thing of why she's still going there, by the way. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, I went to my goo closet, got her some stuff, did a little of that on her. Mm-hmm. She goes, oh, that's great. She, you know, like, it doesn't really matter. Here's how a client measures a good job. If they can repeat and do their hair at home, you mm-hmm. are the most amazing hairdresser yes. ever and they're never going anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And if I, they, I can't repeat it at home, then it, I got a shitty hair. Oh. Exactly. And for a lot of them, that's it. They go home, they wash it. It's not the same. And yeah. now a lot of the hairstylists now are more, they want easier care. They want that sort of thing. They're not mm-hmm. at home doing the iron, doing the spray, combing it out, doing all that. Where if you don't cut well, a lot of times they, they could hide it with a curling iron. Oh. Fluff it all up, spray it all, get it all done. One thing I used to do with clients, though, as I was using the 
product, I would educate them and I would put it in their hand. So Important. that way they're holding it so they get a feel of it. So, so you're getting all the senses so they can smell it, they can feel it. And if they're intellectual, they get the benefits of it. So and he, ch chances are when they, they're holding it, they want to take it home because you've made that yeah. now connection Ownership. with them. Well, yeah. And you know, one of the things like I've got, I, I, even before this pandemic, I had a, I was working with a client. We, we tripled her retail by her profitability in like a couple of months. It was so fast. It was ridiculous. And it was all about the flow and then that communication. And here, there's, there's a thing that makes me really frustrated with a lot of manufacturers right now or anybody who's teaching consultation. Okay, you got to have a better consultation. Oh, well, let's work on the consultation. Oh, this is how a consultation should go. And this mm -hmm. is how, and I'm like, these hairdressers sit there and go, I know how to do a flipping consultation. Mm -hmm. Even even when I was working with, they would come from that. I just want to smack them and yeah. sometimes go, these girls know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like they know their stuff but they will not interrupt a client's flow of conversation to, to um, say, oh yeah, that's really interesting what you're saying there about your family mm -hmm. and, your, and your dog dying and everything, but we're about to, to style your hair. Yes. So when you put that product into their hand, that's the interrupter. Mm -hmm. Because the minute you put it in there, they're picking it up and they're reading, oh, this is all, right? Mm -hmm. So key, so key. And it just breaks it down because you're going from this personal kind of thing right into being professional because that's what they care about. Love that. You probably retail like crazy. Oh, of course. And, yeah. and, your, and your client satisfaction goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. Because say my song, we carried Kevin Murphy and I love, love, love Kevin Murphy. Right. Just because of sustainability, the, you know, a lot of the stuff hey, it has. Brand so. is important right now. Like, right. I was around when Kevin Murphy launched. And one of the things mm -hmm. that was really neat has been really neat in my career is I was around when, Ke when, when Matrix launched Arnie mm -hmm. Miller. My God, it's such a visionary people. Yes. And Kevin Murphy, so visionary, because one of the things that working with some of the mentors I've worked with is not what's going on now. These people want to know what's around the corner. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Murphy right now, let's see, he's launching, he's probably launching, uh, working on, on spring yes. 2022. Mm -hmm. And so the stuff that he brings out, sometimes you look at it, you go, I don't know, what's this gooey stuff? You know, mm -hmm. it, it's not really repeatable. Yes. But uh, so, you know, I just love those brands. That, and I think it's important the sustainability that you were talking about a minute ago and the, mm -hmm. and being about something. The brands that you carry have to be about something. Yes. In fact, you need to be about something right now. People are motivated more right now by being part of something bigger, you know, which is hence my group yes. thing. That's a whole nother mm -hmm. podcast. But um, I didn't mean to, to build that. It just happened. But mm -hmm. people want to be, uh, they will, millennials, 34% of them will pay more to shop local. Yes. And they actually give back. And mm -hmm. so when you look at brands like even Eleven Australia, they work with Hagar, you know, which is the human uh, against, uh, they help support people coming yes. out of human slavery. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. You need to be really key in those brands and stick to the performance brands. This mishmash of everyone's favorite hairspray, it's not going to cut it. No. And that's the thing because uh, clients, number one, are confused normally, mm -hmm. unless they have a product they like. But if you stick to a, a, a line, become that line, have that brand match your brand mm -hmm. and also know what your clients want. If you're not carrying any green or organic products and that's what your clients want, they're going to buy it somewhere else. You know, yeah. and if they find another stylist who's organic and fun and this and yeah. that, and yeah. they're, they're going to go down the road and they're going to yeah. go there. So if you're not giving them what they need, just maybe you love yeah. the spray, but your, your client is constantly coughing because they can't handle it. They don't say anything. Then look for mm -hmm. options. How, mm -hmm. how many salon owners, how many hairstylists actually really connect with their clients and know them. And going back to the consultation, a lot of people do a consultation once once when they first come to them, not once every single visit. So with me, I did a consultation every single visit. Maybe yeah. 
the maintenance ones maybe are a little bit shorter, but the whole point is maybe they want a change in their color formula. Maybe they want a change in their haircut. Maybe, and if you're like, I already mixed your color and they're like, oh, okay. When yeah. maybe they wanted to try highlights that time yeah. that would have raised your ticket, but because you already had it mixed for them, because you figured, yeah. well, they always have the brown color, so I'm going to mix the brown color. And that's what you give them. Uh, you give them a four in, but maybe now they want to go to a five or a six, or they're like, oh, summer's coming. I want to go a little bit lighter. So you have to kind of be with them. Oh, totally. Every I've got single a, step. Oh, yeah. I've got a client of mine right now that I'm working with, and um, and she's doing this. Uh, she does a free consultation and a blow dry. Okay, mm -hmm. this is her marketing right now that, that we're working with. And the amount of people coming in there, they're going, oh, you know, she's getting clients who I know when they come in, they're just going to get that other opinion and mm -hmm. then tell their hairdresser. Do yes. you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. their hairdresser isn't giving to them. What they don't understand is that we've got this here extreme customer service going so mm -hmm. well in this salon. Once you're in the door and you get that kind of consultation and that change, yep. they always rebook them. Exactly. Exactly. And, and there's great um, with that because two, number one, for prospective clients walking by, are most people going to walk into a full busy shop or are they going to walk into an empty shop? Right. Mm -hmm, number yeah. two, the clients now sitting in the chair. Yes, they're getting a free blow dry and don't think of it a free, free blow dry for that one blow dry and that half hour, 45 minutes it takes you. You also have a chance to talk about color, talk about perming, talk oh, about yeah. highlighting, talk uh, about products, talk about. Mm -hmm. So there's that chance to and show and you're also showing your skills. You're showing your knowledge. It's not just a free blow dry. No, no ever. Never These is. girls, they, they know that this is part of their marketing because mm -hmm. I am all about organic marketing. You need to get your, you need to get your, your clients recruiting and doing your marketing. That's mm -hmm. the goal. If you just stay really, really uber focused on just mm -hmm. excellence, you don't have to do a lot of marketing. They'll do it for you. Hey, but, exactly. Uh, and then they're going to yeah. tell other people, I can't believe yeah. it. I followed this salon and they sent me a thing for a free blow dry consultation. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. wow, you know what I mean? It's yeah. so it's a win win because it's not oh, yeah. costing them anything. Oh, yeah. And even if they mess up the blow dry, you, you can wash it. Right. It's all about the conversation that went on. It's all about that connection that no like and trust. You need to let them in, tell them who you are, get personal with them and talk, you know, show them different things. And I mean, there's a skill to to the consultation, obviously. Exactly. But I think what what today's hairdressers and owners need to pay attention to is this is not 2019. This mm -hmm. is not 2020. And the consultations that were valid even a year ago are not as valid today. There are different drivers for customers. They're coming mm -hmm. to you for different reasons than you think. Yeah, that. and that's exactly it. And, and for some of us, depending, like say, uh, we're both in Canada, but there's some salons that aren't open. So this is a great way to add revenue because you could do the same idea that when you're open, we'll do this for you or let's do an online Zoom consultation. So they get to know you. So if they, they only get the blow dry if they come on the consultation and then you mark it down, you get to know them and it just kind of increases. Now you're getting new people you would have never had before instead of waiting until the door is open because sometimes there is a date, the date gets extended, you never know when it's going to happen. But as we go forward, how important is social media and marketing to salon success? Oh my gosh, you know what I hear? I am so, I'm such a believer in what I'm about to tell you right now. Like I, I if you're not, first of all, if you're not doing any social media, I, well, you just have to, or you can just put closed on both sides of your sign, whatever mm -hmm. suits you. But it is the only way that people are communicating. Now, I got to tell you, first of all, I am not a big, so I, a year ago, I wasn't. So don't be giving me this. Oh, I can't. I don't. Me either. Mm -hmm. uh, me either. Now, now I'm everywhere out there. So <laughs> it, it's not like, it's not like you, if you don't know how to do something, you just need to learn how to do it. And that's just one of those things that you just need to learn how to do. But what I started doing back when we started again is I opened a group and I opened a group just so I could stay con in contact as a consultant mm -hmm. with my people, because I'm trying to help people all over the place and what's going on and what. And I just got on there and just started talking and, and saying, hey, you guys got this. And we got, you know, giving them the information as I got it. And I started kind of growing this um, 
pretty soon I had people I didn't even know, like as a rep, I'm going out there and there's somebody else's clients, they're moderns mm-hmm. or there's somebody else's yes. phoning me saying, I want to do business with you. And I, have, I, and they, I had maybe a little bit in there, a little hairspray or a little, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. And all of a sudden I have all of their business now. And that was not because I went out with the best sale ever, five and one free or anything to do mm-hmm. with that. It was about this connection. And so I'm sitting yes. there going, huh, right? So I go to my salons then just as they shut down, because I have one salon I work with, Carla, and she's in Drayton Valley, town of 6,000 people, at, mm-hmm. who, by the way, in the 2019 was actually that town was on the news oh. for their bad economy because of mm-hmm. the oil patch, right? So 6,000 people just renovated, just moved to this really great salon, Mm -hmm. COVID, right? And um, so I we uh, we started building this group. And so, uh, because what happens is you invite 200 people that you have, and they all invite 200 people in the group. Now you're not in front of your people, you're in front of your 200, and 200 Mm -hmm. is somebody else's clients. And so her group now, and I'm working with a brand new girl right now, Whitney, and she's got almost 500 people in her group. And in it, her, her, her group, but see, you go in there, they do tutorials, they started doing curbside, they started doing retail sales. We set up an event in, in Salon A, where mm-hmm. when we ran this event and we did time slotted shopping and uh, all the, and always keeping the people looped in and some protocols and what they're doing and everybody kind of knew what was going, they knew they were open because right now people don't know nothing. Don't Mm -hmm. assume people know you're open. Don't assume people know Mm -hmm. that you sell stuff. Don't assume people know they can prepay and do touch. Don't assume any Mm -hmm. of that. They don't know. And right now, uh, convenience and relevance trumps loyalty. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Right now it just simply does. Anyway. So she phones me, we plan this Mm -hmm. event. And I said, so how'd you do Carla? Because I'm expecting, you know, five thousand yeah. dollar day, whatever, thirteen thousand yeah. dollars wow. in sales between one and five o'clock. Two brands, four stylists, town of seven thousand people. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even yeah. ready for that. <laughs> but Blows consequently, one of the first things when I talk about the two programs I have, mm-hmm. I have one called CPR, which is going to be clients, consumers, promotions, retail. Those are your band aid. You need cash right now. Let's get yeah. you some no problem. I can never, no fail. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I've got a program that's called realm, which is really more about getting in there with the client marketing and the custom extreme customer service and building your brand and your niche and your, your presence and your authority in your Mm -hmm. town so that you are known for being the place you go because you're in that group all the time gaining and grabbing that Mm -hmm. authority by telling people things about face shapes and tutorials and uh, all kinds of stuff, but um, social media. Uh, and I, the reason I go to groups is because if you're sick of Instagramming and I don't know, hashtags and all the people following mm-hmm. you are other hairdressers, which it, they are people, mm-hmm. they are, I'll tell you, and it's not helping you as much as you think. Nope. Plus your Instagram customer, you've talked her into coming and seeing you, someone mm-hmm. else is going to talk her into coming and see them too. Yes. You need to be targeting on purpose, specifically mm-hmm. your clients. And it's a lot easier to do if you're in control of that situation, hence the group, not paid, mm-hmm. but not like your mama's group. So when I'm talking group, it's not like what a lot of people think, but it's, it's a gold mine. No, but the connecting is really important. So as soon as somebody, as I say, likes your page or follows you, or you should connect with them right away because they may be liking five other pages on salons in your area. Pages are useless. Yeah, they they, they don't do enough. They're useless. Only the people who like you are going there. They already like you. Exactly. Exactly. And that's they're going to find you on Google. If if they're really looking, they're going to Google. They're not going to go, oh, let's just go find a page. No. No, at random. Of course not. But for most stylists right now, one thing they have to do, especially with some being yes. closed or, or that, we can't just depend on one source of income anymore. We have to learn how to do multiple things. We have to have multiple streams, whether yeah. that's retail, whether that's, you know, there's a whole list of stuff. We'll do it sure. probably another time. But one thing you do do is I notice you do quite a few um, lives on Instagram and Facebook um, why is engagement a key factor in relating to your audience? Well, the lives, first of all, I'm lazy. So for me, it's honestly, it's easier for me to just pop on and go, you know what? Mm-hmm. And uh, what I'm thinking or what I see. And so I, 
then there's something really engaging about a live and and you know they talk about authenticity and all that kind of stuff you really just need to do that you know mm -hmm. to go on in this before and after i got to tell you if you're competing on the realm of great hair that is a really tough tough battle because there's mm -hmm. some really great hair out there mm -hmm. and there's some great hairdressers and even the bad hairdressers are going to luck out and get the good one every once in a while and post it out there but if you're trying to compete on good hair and your yeah. before and afters, you're not going to. It's, mm -hmm. You're not going to win. You're going to get the person phone. Oh, I love that. And then they're calling you and how much? Yes. Right. Um, and that's not really who you want to have. When you when I'm engaging, I got to tell you, I sometimes I'm a little polarizing. It seems like people really, really love me or they're mm -hmm. like, that lady's crazy. But I'll tell you, I have raving fans and mm -hmm. I've got people who aren't. So I got people yeah. who already promote me. Like I, I don't think anybody's ever seen me do an ad to get clients. I've no. never done an ad. And, and that's a great thing. Cause if you have somebody who advocates for you and that's beyond like a super fan, a super fan will go above and beyond to say, I went to this place. This hairstylist is so amazing. I love the products. I love the experience. I love this. I love that. Yeah. You and know the only I mean? way, yeah. And the only way you're going to really get them to believe you or to follow you is if mm -hmm. you get on live people and I'm talking stuff, Right. And when yeah. you're live as a hairdresser and you're out there and you're the ones who are doing the things like the tutorials or how to show them people how to use their dry shampoo and yes. and having it drop out of their hand and laughing at themselves mm -hmm. and still picking it up. It's like there's this, this there's this relatability that says if she can do this and if she's do it, then I can. And oh, I love her. And it doesn't really matter. I hope it's kind of like this. I'm going to go see her. Gee, I hope she can do hair. <laughs> exactly because just showing great pictures so many pictures online are photoshopped you know what i mean and they're like oh look at this i did this it's amazing and then you go in and it's you know your before and after is nothing like what they've shown on there which leads me to my next question do you feel that most salons are at 100 percent when it comes to customer care and customer service Like if, if somebody was to come in, like do people, most salons and or oh, every no. salon go above and beyond to. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> you know what? And if you're just giving them what they expect, okay. Like you you promote, you've got this great experience and they look at you and they say, oh, and they see all this nice stuff that suits me. It speaks mm -hmm. to me. When I come in, if you meet that expectation, I'm, it's okay. You need to exceed it. You need to give me that shock and delight, that surprise and delight. You do that because mm -hmm. I'm already, I, I'm already, I'm satisfied because you gave me the great experience that I was yes. expecting. But if you can go beyond what I was expecting, that's when I start talking about you on the water cooler. They don't do exactly. that kind of talk about the haircut they got. I'm sorry, they did, they don't. No. But they will talk about you when they went. And I went there, they did it. Oh, you know. But as far as that uh, customer service goes, I think, I think that if. If you did nothing, mm -hmm. if you did nothing more than extreme customer journey, I call it, because it's just like it's it's right from the minute that they walk in and you make that experience be crazy. You can mm -hmm. you, you can you can cut their hair with an axe and yep. they're going to come back and let you fix mm -hmm. it, at least, you know, but no, I don't know any salons, very few salons that are doing that but i will tell you i work with small salons predominantly mm -hmm. in smaller towns a lot of the people i coach have got four or five six salon six six operators i've got yep. two three operator places mm -hmm. that are smashing numbers that my larger salons with 10 12 50 would dream of mm -hmm. right because of the experience and the the way that they treat people in the the retail sales are through the roof. If any of the customers that I worked with told me they were doing 20%, it would be like, geez, we only hit 20. I'm mm -hmm. like, what did you do wrong this month? Like the, yeah. to me, not hitting 20, that's just like, we, we, we would know that we, when something broke last month. Like Exactly. And most salons, I think, fall below that percentage. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Five. It's so, so far below. Yeah, because when my salon, the way that we bought product was to sell products. So my product budget came out of my product sales, not mm -hmm. my hair sales, oh. not my. So that's how we did it. And, and, you know, another thing that's really kind of controversial in salons is the first mm -hmm. thing we, we do when we're working with them is we stop with the, the, the percentage of of um, on, on commission on retail. Because think about this. If that stylist sells one thousand dollars 
then she makes a hundred bucks. Do you know that works out to yeah. $5 a day in Canada, three fifty with taxes, mm. why don't you just buy her a coffee? So for me, yes. it's not an incentive and mm -hmm. it's not a reward. It's no. neither one of those things. And so when, even when we talk and I don't have any salons that have done that where the staff mm went crazy because if you're having a money conversation about how yeah. much you're making with your staff something else is broken mm -hmm. first of all but um these salons where we, they've taken that back and now they can do stuff like let's all go and do our meeting next year in jasper mm -hmm. do you know what i mean or yeah. or here's a hundred bucks you guys i got one salon where they did that and they do these quiet nights and these uh give back nights where oh. uh, where not only did they donate all of the ticket sales for the quiet mm -hmm. night with the singing bowl and the yes. whole thing that they did is all of those girls without even being asked because none of them were being paid donated their tips like oh wow so you know i don't think money's the motivator that mm -hmm. we think it is no of course not and and for a lot of people um people like to be recognized people like you know that let's say more so than money money's fine but oh, yeah. Some people, if you give them, as I say, like a special shout out or employee of the month or oh, yeah. we, we used to do that, mm -hmm. or I would take a staff member, our whole team would go out and they would get their meal for free and a gift certificate and things like that. But it'd be a total surprise. So it's not like yes. we, one thing we did in our salon too, we had a box and you had to catch people when they were doing something right or exactly. something good exactly. so instead of i saw so and so do this and it's like because i can't see everything the receptionist manager can't see everything we can say i saw stylist xyz do this and help this and whatever and make a change yeah. in this person and it's great and then we would yeah. read them all and then it's like then that bonds people a lot Amazing. closer too because then they can see you know here are the, these are because most people now if you're in a commission salon i'm fighting for that client you're fighting for that client because you're like i got bills to pay i'm like i got bills to pay mm -hmm. and if i can't do that client and make that percentage mm -hmm. i'm not mm -hmm. but a lot of those salons the claws are out because they don't give like say there's no incentive a lot of mm -hmm. times the the commission for products is very low or non-existent and you have to work your butt off in order to make no nobody no, at all. nobody I, i've never met a stylist and i've never been a stylist who actually sold a, a ten dollar product for the dollar she made that is yeah. not the motivator people do not <clears throat> go out and sell mm -mm. honestly a thousand dollars worth of retail for the hundred bucks i'm sorry no. and but what the salons do do is like what you were saying you go around and they're all rewarded and yes. she makes sure that she bonuses in things we have a setup in the back mm -hmm. there where we have a team goal. And so when we hit this team goal, like, I don't care. For first thing we say when I go in there is there's no more retail going on here. We're not having any of that because no. that's garbage. And they're like, what? Oh, great. Because a lot of stylists feel very pressured mm -hmm. to, to keep sell, up sell, their sell. retail numbers. And yeah. so they feel like it's sell, 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 which is ugly and dirty and icky. And mm -hmm. nobody wants to do that. People want to buy. People do not want to be sold. So I look at the consumer, the owners first thing, and I say, why don't you just allow the customer to buy? Why are you making them go over there to, to yes. look at it? Like mm -hmm. make it so that the customer can buy, make it be fun and tell your stylist for heaven's sakes, quit selling stuff because yes. it's icky and, and it, the whole thing relaxes. And then instead of tracking dollars, because that's mm -hmm. not hairdresser speak. No. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We, we track SKUs. So what, what we do is I break down how many average SKUs that they are mm -hmm. selling a day. So yes. say they're, they're doing five a day. Do you know that one extra SKU a day is $9,600 a year? That's mm -hmm. a lot. That's just for doing one yes. more one every mm -hmm. single day. Then they hit the, the, the team goal and they start helping each other because Mm -hmm. There's no pressure. I don't care if you do. Don't care if you don't. Do yeah. you know, like, let's head here. Then people feel like, oh, I, I'm not doing my part. I got to talk more. And so you start listening to what the other people are saying. And it's just a, a different, more healthy yes. um, and more wellness and more lovely. Because like you were saying, it does become very intercompetitive. So mm -hmm. how do we lift our team up? Exactly. You know, how, how do we make that place? Oh, everyone's always talking about COVID. You know what? Every single second of your life is a choice and you chose mm -hmm. to get involved in that conversation. Exactly. I'm sorry, you just did. You know, mm -hmm. there's a million ways for you to kind of make that be a nice place that where everybody loves. Yeah, and that's a, exactly it. I never had my staff sell anything. I always said yeah. recommend, but never sell.
because a lot of people that sell, 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 the client comes again and they're like, Hey, you need this. And you're like, you sold me that last time I was here. They don't even remember because they put it about the money, but we had great prizes. You know, they could win blow dryers, irons, a big screen TV, things like that, that, that they can utilize, right. As opposed to, you know, make the sales and okay, you were the top seller this week and that's it. Oh, no. And it doesn't work. And one thing Whitney will tell you, the girl I'm working with right now is we took away the retail. And at first she was like, oh, can I, you know, because some some salons are doing this elevated thing, like 10 mm-hmm. percent and then 12 yes. percent and then 15 yes, percent. Mm-hmm. And, and it's it's really crazy because that is your area of profit. And if you cannot if you can if you can get that area of profit going, you do not need another stylist. Mm-hmm. Like it will just keep on going for you. And um, it's just worth pursuing you know if you i yeah. oh, tried it didn't work okay well listen i don't want to work with you either do you know like it's so yeah. frustrating when when you can't you know when i look at people i see the genius and the possibilities and it's like yeah. i can't do that but um they she's doing more she's she's doing she's tripled her retail in three months and the stylists are selling more now retailing more now mm-hmm. than than they ever than they than she's ever she didn't even know she could do what she's doing and they're happy Mm -hmm. they're and they're happy and she rewards them and she's looking after them yeah and and that's the way it should be and you hit on it like a lot of people think that by adding more staff like they're like i need money for the salon i need money for salon. i better hire more stylists so they hire more stylists well, what that does, it just depletes the clientele that's already existing for the people there. Then the stylists that are already there saying, how come they're giving the new person clients this and that. But what I found is anytime, anytime somebody advertised, you know, hairstylist wanted must have clientele, I would steer clear because you it know, shows you they need your clients yeah, and your yeah, money in order to yeah, keep them afloat. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, you know, and that's, that's like a, that's just like a super true story for sure but you actually lose money if you're there's a yep. there's a breaking point and in Canada mm-hmm. we see this I think a little bit more than we do in the U.S. where we've got this 50 percent con- yes. commission feel you know mm-hmm. and at 50 percent commission you're not making any money on the stylist anyway so if she quits good for you exactly. because you, you put on there the, the holiday pay if you're paying anything more than that forget about it Mm-hmm. But if you put the holiday pay on there, you match the CPP, the UI, yes. you know, 1.4 on the UI, mm-hmm. uh, you're really not making any money. So you're at a kind of a break even point yes. with her, if you're making money on her mm-hmm. at all. So yes. I think that to focus in on getting more of that business going on is just kind of not a great no. call. Uh, I know as an owner, even I was profit more profitable because revenue and profit are two completely different areas. Exactly. And having less staff, more, as I say, more busy, and they're making more, as I say, having a tighter unit, I think is way better. That's why a lot of these salons, you know, that are smaller are beating your bigger salons yeah. with a way more chairs because mm-hmm. less competition. Oh. They're all working together. Sure. They're all, and you-, you know, in harmony. Sure. And you notice like at the beginning where I said I'm helped salon and suite owners organically get ideal clients mm-hmm. and ideal staff. Yes. Because putting a sign out there going, come join our team means absolutely nothing. Nobody's coming to join your team. You'll mm-hmm. get the apprentice and you'll get yep. the hairdresser in town that nobody wants. Exactly. So w- when you are building a, a, a brand, like on my bigger, my, my longer program mm-hmm. that I called, you know, realm, when you mm-hmm. are building that, that authority in your community and that extreme customer service and the give back and the value and the, you start mm-hmm. doing those things, right. The right hairdressers come because exactly. what happens with stylists and clients mm-hmm. too, by the way, mm-hmm. is they will stay in a salon that they're not happy in yes. for a really long time. And they're looking at you in your group. This is why I like the group thing kind of thing. Cause you yes. can so behind the scenes stuff like crazy in a group mm-hmm. thing. Right. And, um, but you can attract to you um, those right stylists. Cause you're never going to run an ad and get one. Exactly. So if people were to uh, be part of your private group, um, how would they benefit from joining? Well, I'm just trying to figure out a way that it could, that I could deal with more people. Cause right now I do like a one-on-one coaching program. Mm-hmm. It's, um, I don't know, 
Should I say pricing or is it? No, I don't, I don't care. I'm not. I, well, it's I, better it's, if they contact you directly, have a consult me, with you. Yeah. And then sure. they can work and you and, can adjust it to their sure. situation. Because what I do yeah. in the one on one is I actually mm -hmm. go into their, I, I'll go look up their three largest competitors in their area. I Google them in their area. Yeah. I find out where every, I try to find your lane. Do you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. can have a lane. So I just kind of do all of that for them. And so we are coming in with a super clear picture. And then they can pick the three things that are really sort of, I, I can usually see them before we have our conversation, mm -hmm. which makes it super handy. Yes. And um, then we kind of go in and we just sort of, it's it's a beautiful, it is a beautiful <laughs> process. And it is so much fun. Do you know what I mean? Because you're starting yes. and you're just, and you're building something that lasts. Exactly. And then, then with the CPR program, which is super, super needy, needed, I want to work that into a group. Mm -hmm. So because I can only do so many one on ones because I'm really in. I don't know how not yeah, to do because even I'm some people in. love do what you do one on one, but do it as a group coaching. Yeah. So, so what I'm going to do is yeah, is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to be opening up really shortly here. By the way, too, like I'm thinking probably within the next couple of weeks, mm -hmm. where I'm going to do a group program where I'll be able to accommodate a nice set of people where we can all go through this together. Yeah. We get, you know, we'll start at the beginning. I'll go in Monday. We'll do the lessons. But I think a lot of because I have all the programs. Like I have mm -hmm. PDFs. If anybody out there, by the way, wants. Anything, I uh, consumer trends, my Facebook, just ask me, I'll give it to you. Like, yeah. I got no issues with holding anything back from you. I'm all about just throwing value. I'll on send you my email at the end. <laughs> you can call, listen, you got anybody out there, you can call me anytime. I am not going to be on the phone going, yeah. trying to close you down because I don't yeah. care. You know what I mean? Like, if I give enough value out there, then the right people are going to find me because I also want ideal clients. So I am going to be opening a group program, which is going to be so much fun uh, because everybody who's there is going to want to be is, is going to be in. Exactly. I, I, I'd really like to build a community. I already have a bit of a community where mm -hmm. uh, anybody out there, if you want to go ahead and join a simple salon. So sol uh, no, pardon me. It's called 2021 salon solutions it's just a small intimate uh, group of 200 mm -hmm. salon owners and we're open to anybody who's a salon yeah. owner wants to join but i'd like to see that community kind of build up so i'm opening a um a group coach program and uh, where we're going to go through this together and then i am going to be um taking on probably about three 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 new one-on-one -on -one clients mm -hmm. here again starting next month so that's what i do now salon i got to talk because we're on salon. Um, yeah, and that's my next question. So okay, you're listen, <laughs> I've got five programs on there already because I have programs. It's like last week, uh, somebody, uh, I think Tracy said, hey, listen, do any of you trainers out there have programs about team, you know, building a mm -hmm. team or what they can do? And I'm like, oh, hey, that's my jam. I ended up in two days because I already got, I mean, this is, is yes. part of, it's part of what my other programs are, are all these bits it's just mm -hmm. in my programs, you know, my coaching programs, I just pull them all together for you. But that site is amazing. The trainers on there are so crazy good. I mean, and they've all got these little short programs that yes. are running on there. And I all of my programs on there, for the most part, are all these little bits, because I can't mm -hmm. do everything in an hour and a half. But I can let you know, you would know if you went to any of them, if anything was resonating with you. Do you know, okay. and, and then what I'm doing is I'm actually selling strategy sessions too. So you can book me for three hours and I'll tell you, once you send me your info beforehand, mm -hmm. three hours, oh my gosh, you can, or I think I did, did it two hours. You got yourself a really good plan, but it, I really exactly. like the site. I love the idea of the site. I think that there's, everything is on there for whether they are looking for cuts, colors, balayage, and mm -hmm. the talent, the talent is really. It'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. And that's why I, too, like I, you. We're both I trainers. Believe, I couldn't believe they let me in. You know, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm reading this one day and I'm going, oh. Yeah, I'm look like, who else is here. Am I and even? I, and then yeah. I see all these other faces and I'm like, oh, well, it can't hurt me to be on the same page as them. Exactly. <laughs> is that a little bit of the imposter syndrome coming in? <laughs> uh, so here, me, I'll tell you, it really is. I have people all the time. I'm like, is people any listening? Am I making any sense? Like, is this any, you know, yeah. you were always that, hey? Exactly. But salon, salontraining.com, it's brand new. Both Heather and I are both educators on there or trainers on there. You know, make sure that you check it out. Um, I teach some hair stuff. Heather teaches more like business building and that sort of thing as well. But if you kind of get the 
gist of everything. And I think it's nice that with salontraining.com, they have a platform where you can find everything. And yes, it's great to learn balayage, but you need to learn more than just balayage. You need to know the ins and outs of your business. You need to know social media. You need to know, as I say, how to do, maybe you're not great at putting hair up or doing it quickly because for a lot of people, time is money. Because as I say, would you spend, would you give me $10,000 if I could show you in five minutes and guarantee you would make a million? Of course you would. So it's not really about the time or the expense. It's what you learn. As I say, there's three categories. There's classes, which is one day. There's um, courses, which are more than one day. And then a mentorship, which is a once, once a month program. So it's great if you can kind of go there. We'll put the link below. You can sign up. You can uh, become a member, look around. And one great thing, if you do become a member, they do have monthly free classes that don't cost you anything so there's free classes and they're also paid classes but as i say if you sign up with heather get some coaching from her have take her wisdom take her experience ask all the questions you need to ask in that time utilize it to your benefit to make your business so much um so much better so if they were going to find you how would they find you online Okay, well, there's a couple of things they can do. If you go to my Instagram, it's simple salon underscore solutions, and you click the, the Shorby link on there, it'll send you to a calendar, it'll send you to my web page, and I think I got it sending someplace else. And within two weeks, there'll be a, even a little landing page there. And I'm just going to oh, put wow. a landing page that will explain to you what my group program is all about. So just by clicking on my uh, Instagram link, you'll be have access to those three avenues to get a hold, to get a hold of me. But uh, I encourage any owner out there, if you'd like to just come and hang with us in, the, in my group, it, I'm mm -hmm. kind of real in there and I encourage, you know, we don't do a lot of back and forth, in, but we do I encourage you to welcome them to join me there too, or you can DM me. And um, I'll have a conversation with anybody for 30 minutes, for sure. If you just kind yeah. of like, I'm not too sure what fits for me and I'm never gonna charge you for that. And if I can help you for free, I am gonna absolutely help you for free. And you're gonna know yourself if there's anything I'm doing that- Exactly, because say you do, you. you do all the lives, people can watch you on the lives, you're real, you're raw, you're ready, you're right mm -hmm. there. And, and who we see is you. Yep. It's not like, hey, I'm so perfect and I'm this and I'm that. I'm broken. People want real, people want to connect and they want somebody, at least what you're doing is if they invest in you, you've already done that learning curve. So why mm -hmm. not pay somebody who's already done the, the stumbling, the falling down, the mistakes, the choice, and they can show you now well, the right way of how to do stuff. Absolutely. And I always I'll say to salons all the time, you only know what's going on in your world. That's all I do for a living is see salons. So who really knows better what's going to work for you, me or you? Like I just used to say, it's so nice to have just that different perspective. And so exactly. if nothing else, you can get some quick perspective from talking to any of the coaches on here. And I know that they would all be open to just oh, you to know, all of them. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm still blown away to get through as many as they have. And yeah. these are high level people yeah. that that you, like and I think if they're associated with it, it must be the real deal. <laughs> There's a couple of those coaches because it, uh, it's not my joy. Everyone needs yep. to stay in their genius zone. Yes, uh, it's not my joy working numbers and budgets and mm -hmm. profit now, and that's not my joy. Do I understand yep. it? Sure. Do I understand it? Sure. But I would rather not talk about it. I exactly. love this. Makes this gets me jazzed, as mm -hmm. you can tell. My what I do. Of course, so and I, you want somebody. You want somebody oh, totally. passionate. You want somebody. Oh. Who's but you know what, Nikki Lee and and um, Neil Dukoff. Yes. I mean, those people, uh, Lauren, I mean, they, they all are so solid in their niches mm -hmm. that why would I want to do that? Exactly. You know, you look at Michelle and she does, uh, you know, the Google thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand it. It annoys me because I have yes. to do it. I'm like, get a hold of Michelle or get a hold of Nikki because so I don't actually have to go there. So I just think that there is... Yeah. Of course, there's people that specialize and say, go on, find a trainer that you resonate with, find yeah. subjects that you need to know, whatever you're lacking in, like Heather said, go out, learn how to do it. You don't know social yeah. media, find somebody who knows how to do it and get, you know, get it. And some of the courses you can get certified even um, depending on what's, what's on there, but we're going to wrap. So in closing, what's your nugget of gold you would leave our audience with? Right now, there's a huge migrating client base out there. If you do nothing else, understand what motivates people, get in front of that. 
just find out what the drivers are why people go where they go and just be that and if if anybody wants you can dm me i've got a really neat little uh, uh i so i'm so nerdy it's a consumer <laughs> buying trend it's emerging consumer buying trends okay. pdf and i spent a lot of time researching and it just talks about why people are shopping where they're shopping and be the consumer right now and you can win yeah and i think that's so important that's great advice because a lot of people don't know where to start what to do but at least if you're kind of keeping an eye on things it, yep. it it really it really helps you so i want to say thank you heather for joining us today so i want to make sure everybody goes to salontraining.com the website is www.salontraining.com so if you go there become a member check out what they have i'm teaching heather's teaching i want to say thank you again heather for being an hour just flew by i, I probably i imagine we could probably talk for days we could <laughs> we, 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 we were going to do 30 minutes weren't we we were but you're so I'm here amazing I'm here and fantastic, today. you know, <laughs> it was but, fun. but the nuggets of gold that are left just in this alone. And I imagine anybody who listens to this or re listens to this, that you could listen to it over and over and over and get so much free information, the gold that's been left just in this podcast alone. If you apply anything that we've said, even if it's one nugget, one nugget to me is worth the whole the whole the whole time mm -hmm. so i want to say thank you again thanks we'll for having me you're welcome so much uh, fun you're awesome i love you <laughs> thank you go to salontraining.com and we'll see you next time